Hello and welcome to part 6 in the Valkyrie sound series on recreating the sound of Alien Isolation in Unreal Engine 4. In this video we're going to pair sounds with actors in blueprints and apply reverbs so that we can create added depth and realism to the spaces we're creating. We're going to take the sounds we made in parts 2 and 3 and add them to a scene from the Modular Sci-Fi Season 2 pack by Jonathan Frederick. It's free to download on the Epic Marketplace and I'll put a link in the description below. So we have a few different assets in this map we could use for this. I'm going to use the phone. If we click on the asset, and in the right hand side under static mesh, if you click on the little magnifying glass, that's going to take you to the folder where that is. Right click on that, asset actions, and then create blueprint using this. It's going to give you an option about where you want to store that blueprint. So we're going to put it into audio and then blueprints. Now I've already created one, so I'm going to open that one up. This is the Audio BP VoIP phone, and this is our setup for this one. Now, first of all, we need to add our audio element. You can do this by either dragging the sound in from the content browser or clicking Add Component, Audio, and then over on the right hand side from the sound drop down, find the sound that you want to add in. I've already done this by dragging the sound in, and I've dragged that into the event graph as well here. Whichever way you do that, make sure that you don't have auto activate ticked because we don't want the sound to play as soon as the game starts. From the event begin play node, pull out and add a delay node. Again, the duration is going to be a random float in range. I've set mine to 8 and 14, but you can use whatever values you like. So we don't want the sound to come around too quickly, but it's useful to keep it short for testing. Also remember that the delay in the blueprints counts down as soon as a sound cue is played. That's different to how the sound cues themselves handle delays, which run from when the sound is finished. So if you prefer, you could add a delay node in the queue itself, which could be really useful if you need some precision. Otherwise, just keep in mind how long your asset is, roughly, so that you can set a delay that's going to be longer than the asset itself. From the delay completed pin, we're going to run out and create a branch. And from the audio reference that we dragged in before, we're going to add a is playing node. That checks to see if the sound is already in play. Hook that up to the branch condition. From true, we're going to loop back to the delay. And from false, we're going to add a play node, which is connected to the audio reference. The branch is going to check if our sound is already playing, and it will re-trigger the delay if it is, so that we avoid any overlapping sounds. This is very unlikely to be an issue with this particular asset because our delays are longer than the asset itself, but this is a useful little thing to include and can be handy if you have several assets within a queue that have different lengths. Finally, we need an attenuation setting for this sound queue as well. So in the content browser, we're going to go to the effects folder and we're just going to copy and paste one of these and rename it ATT Machine. If I open that up, I've set the inner radius to 150 and the fall off distance to 500. If we scroll further down, you can see that I've also added some occlusion. Occlusion means that if there is an object in the way of the sound, it's going to affect the sound in some way by blocking the higher frequencies. Basically the same effect you would have if you heard a sound behind a closed door in the real world. So I've ticked enable occlusion, I've set the low pass filter frequency to 1500 Hz, that's going to block any sounds above 1500. The volume attenuation is set to 0.4, which is going to lower the volume of the sound and interpolation is set to 0.2, which is the time it's going to take to apply the frequency filter. For more on occlusion, you can check out my other video in the link above. Save this and close it. And now back in our blueprint, click on the sound cue in the components window. And on the right hand side, on your attenuation settings, click the drop down and select the machine. Compile and save and click on the browse button. That's going to take us to where the asset is in the content browser. And now you can drag out and place this wherever you like in the game. You can see as well a visual representation of where the attenuation is going to be applied. Now I've applied mine already here. The final step is to create some reverb. This is going to add some depth to our sounds and make the spaces feel a little bit more realistic. So remember how the sounds echoed and reverberated around all the different spaces in Alien Isolation? Well, this is basically what we're going to do now. So in the main editor, go to the panel in the upper left, and you want to select Volumes, and then Audio Volume. Just drag that into the level. 
Now I've added two. We've got one for the main room, which is here, and one for the corridors, which is here. Let's do the main room one first. So with that volume selected, scroll down to the reverb section, click on the reverb effect drop down, and you want to click on reverb effect at the top. That's going to let us create a new reverb, which we can place in the effects folder. So once that's done, you just need to open that up. These are the settings that I've used for the main room, and these are the settings I've used for the corridor. If you'd like to know more about reverb and all the different parameters, what they do and how to use them, you can check out my other video on that in the link above. Back in the editor, make sure that you have the right reverb applied to the space. So main space, main room, corridors, corridor. In order to get the reverb to work, we'll need to use a console command. We drop ourselves into the level by pressing play. So enter the game. Press the dash above the tab key and type in au dot is using audio mixer and set that to one. Exit play mode and re-enter. And now you should have reverb applied to all of the sounds in here. So we've got the engine hum bass layer. We have the sounds of the phantom footsteps. We've got the sounds of the distant thuds. And if we go over to the machine, the phone, as if on cue, we have the sound there as well with some reverb applied too. So in my scene, I've added a few other sounds which you can download below. These include assets and air vents for aircon and fan whirs. I've included three instances, or if we go in here, We're in this next room. So now we've got a whole lot of extra fans whirring around for some aircon. We've got aircon in the last room here as well. And in this next room, we have some machine whirs. So if we exit at this point and just have a look. Where is it? There we are. So if we find that asset and just open it up. So here we've got a bunch of machine sounds attached to a random node, then a modulator node, which is changing the pitch a little bit. Then we have a delay node, which is acting like the random delay node that we added to the third person character blueprint. Then we have a looping node, which means that these sounds will just continuously go around in a loop according to this delay. If you want more information on each of these nodes in the sound queue, you can check out some of my what is tutorials. I've created a basic sound effect for the doors. It's very, very simple. And this is how I've edited the existing blueprint asset of the door to add those sounds in. So as soon as the, the overlap trigger is activated, that's when we play the first part of the door sound. And as soon as the animation sequence is finished, that's when we play the second part of the door sound here. I've also used submixes in this folder here with reverb EQ filter effects applied to the doors, fandom footsteps and the words sound cue. If you imagine the reverb in the audio volume as a generalized sound effect, the submix allows us to override that and apply specific effects to certain sounds or groups of sounds. Alien Isolation appears to use a very similar system and that the fandom footsteps don't seem to attract as much reverb as the distant thuds of Sebastopol. Submixes is something that we'll cover in a future part in the series. One thing we don't have in this setup is any mixing. That means that our sound cues are at a pretty much the same volume as they were when we made them. I've made some very small adjustments to the volumes of some sounds, but we can group our sounds into different classes and apply volume adjustments to each of those classes in a dynamic way. For example, if we also had music, the overall soundscape might be starting to get a bit cluttered. So if we wanted the player to feel tense, we might increase the music, say with that plucked strings effect you often get in tense moments in Alien Isolation and in the Alien films. And we might reduce the volume of the thirds and fandom footsteps, but increase the volume of Ripley's breathing. Similarly, if Ripley is crouching or moving slowly, we might increase the sound of her footsteps and clothing if she's near enemies to heighten the state of tension. 
What this does is effectively mimics how our senses respond to dangers in the real world. Our ears become more acute to certain sounds, and this elicits a particular response of fear or panic. Or, much more benignly, we might just have some dialogue, and we don't want it to be drowned out by the music and the sound effects, so we can duck or reduce the volume of every sound except speech, which allows our player to hear what's being said. And that's it for this tutorial. In the next video, we'll look at Ripley's footsteps, how they provide environmental clues through material changes, how we can take a small number of recordings to get a wide range of movement sounds for stealth, walking and running, and how we can apply effects so that the player isn't distracted by repetitive movement sounds. Thanks for watching, and as always, take care and good luck with your own projects.